It's the best way to answer uh, bigots is to create a drama like this. Teenage girls are developing a new organ. One that generates electricity. This is not a hoax. background yes i do yes i do right here well congratulations on the show uh what an interesting concept um power in the hands of a different gender doesn't exactly mean things are going to be better so what is it like for you guys to be part of a show uh where you're kind of i mean it's kind of like empowering you know like these women have powers but then it's going to get twisted <laughs> Yeah, I feel like in the first series, there's a real sense of like revolution and kind of hope that, you know, maybe a better world can be born out of this. Obviously, that changes down the line. But but, but initially, I just found it, I think it's quite cathartic to see a show where women are gaining, you know, autonomy of their own body when we live in a world when, you know, the opposite is kind of happening. Yeah, it, it kind of feels a little bit like a kind of Trojan horse television in a sense, huh. in, in that people think it's going to be about one thing, it's going to be about women gaining power. And, and, and actually it's about the concept of power and how it can be used for good or evil and, and how it can be abused. So it's really interesting to know as an actor, you're setting something up and seducing an audience and then there's going to be a payoff later on down the line. And drink up for you? It speaks about so many problems that still exist all around the world. And I really hope that it will start a process of thinking. What I, what I loved for me was like the, how intersectional it is when we're talking about women and power, sometimes it's from a particular lens, but the cultural nuances, the different ages, the diversity of our cast, men, women, people who identify differently, just shows how complex power is and how complex um, it operates. And I just think it really honors like a general wide conversation of how power can be abused. And with Tunde's perspective of, I think it's really important to have a, a, a male perspective in it because it's not just for kind of women or people who identify as women, it's kind of for everyone. And yeah, I feel like our storyline really talks about that, the, the differences in those approaches. Mm. Mm. But and also like like the show being global, a is super ambitious because everybody can watch this show and see themselves in you know any of our characters. But mm. also depend like regardless of what country you're in, what your culture is, what your politics is in that country, <clears throat> human beings are human beings, and human beings and their relationship with power is the same everywhere. Like people have you know a desire for it, people get intoxicated by it, people get corrupted by it, and you know as much as it has the power. Um, for good it, there's also like negative consequences that can come when people abuse that power and that's the same everywhere so um so yeah I think it's almost essential that the show is as global as it is because we're talking about humanity you know as like we're not just talking about what women are like in the western world or in Africa yeah. or it, yeah. like it's it's about everyone everywhere really mm -hmm. and then for you guys what was it like playing these tortured characters yeah it was it was amazing because you know this I think the, the writers have done such a good job of creating these complex, complicated, um, three-dimensional characters. And uh, there's a lot of nuance in there with Roxy. And, you know, she does do questionable things. and But she is she is motivated by, by trauma and by grief. And, um, yeah, I think that, I don't know, I, I felt like a, a responsibility to kind of do the book justice as well. Um, but it was, it, was fun, it was fun playing her as well because it was quite cathartic, really going to scream loads <laughs> as a kid because we see her as a kid as an, and as an adult and as a kid she kind of represents every kid who is still growing up without parents love and protection and uh, as an adult she represents every woman or a man uh, who lives in any kind of position or relationship where you know you can't say what you think you're not allowed to speak. You're not allowed to say, you know, how you feel. Um, you have to say yes, meaning no. Um, so, yeah, I'm proud. And you think at the heart of the story is how the rage is growing and that kind of inspires the, you know, the power. 
I think something happens, this teenage girl thing, I was talking to Naomi Oldman about it, why teenage girls get it. And what I was thinking to myself is that I think when, when you kind of grow up around 13, 14, and you become kind of emotionally intelligent and things start changing, often women are told, okay, be quiet now, mm-hmm. put that emotion down, quench it. But this is a kind of a celebration of that fight and the tenacity in women. So it's really a celebration of how rage can be really powerful and transformational. And Tunde's mm-hmm. journey, he sees all of that. And I think for Ndudi, something traumatic and uh terrible can be transformed into something really beautiful and i think that's what's happening with the power for me yeah. and also just off, off the back of that i think it's the same for any minority group you know like you push a group to the side or you silence them for too long and what you're going to get is the pushback of that and that rage you know at the at the heart of it you know it's pain it's hurt it's emotion it's love it's all of those feelings that have kind of like bubbled up onto the point where it can't be suppressed anymore and it can't be held back anymore and in our world it transforms itself into this new power that women everywhere develop. And I think there's something really beautiful and poetic about that. And Eddie, really quick, what, do you, what is it like for your character? Because you right, kind of represent the patriarchy, right? It's fascinating to play a, a character that, that's the expression of toxic masculinity, but in a production that's written, written by, directed by, and produced by women. But I, I, tell you what, I tell you one of the things I'm most proud of, I think we have people like Andrew Tate and and a lot of other kind of misogynists on social media. And social media is really good at conveying reductive binary ideas. And I think the best answer to that kind of bullshit is to come up with long form drama like this, where you can persuade people with complexity and nuance. It's the best way to answer uh, bigots is to create a drama like this. Now I feel a hundred times stronger. 